Hi, I'm Ted Venema. Let's continue our tour on hearing aids. The first vignette on hearing aids dealt with how hearing aids are so different from eyeglasses. Hearing aids for the ear are vastly different than lenses or glasses for the eye. And that's because, as we said <clears throat> with the eye, light isn't properly focused on the back of the retina, and so we need lenses in front to refocus the light properly onto the retina. Whereas with hearing, it's like the retina itself of the ear is damaged. And so no amount of proper focusing of sound on that is going to <clears throat> remedy or fix the problem. That's why that the name hearing aid is a good name. It's like a cane for a bad knee. It helps, but it never replaces the real McCoy. But here's the, the good news is there's a lot we can do with hearing aids today. Hearing aids, as we said in the last vignette on hearing aids, they don't just make sounds louder. Hearing aids sculpt and shape the sound according to the listener's hearing audiogram. In that wise, hearing aids are literally programmed. Hearing aids today are all digital. And they have all these different channels that we can exquisitely manipulate at will in order to make a best fit for the client. Hearing aids today, like glasses, require a prescription. So it's not like you can just borrow your neighbor's hearing aid because all they do is make sounds louder. That is fundamentally false. Let's look at hearing aids further. Here's someone's hearing loss. Typical presbycusis, mild hearing in the lows, mild hearing loss, sloping down to a moderate hearing loss in the high frequencies. Typical, typical presbycusis. Well, a hearing aid for this person should be delivering somewhat of a mirror image configuration, a different, the opposite shape. Here's, these are called channels. This is frequency along the bottom, and this is amount of amplification along the vertical. You can see all the different channels. I've numbered them here. And we can literally lift the amount of amplification we give for this particular person so that it can be shaped much like this. So this person is getting very little bass amplification because he's got good bass hearing, and he's getting much more treble amplification because the treble hearing here is worse. So hearing aids today are all multi-channel in order to exquisitely sculpt and shape what's called the frequency response of the hearing aid. But that's only part of the picture. We, the story doesn't end here, we can go further. When we look here at this particular slide, we're seeing two different programs in a hearing aids. So hearing aids are not only multi-channel, but they are also programmable. When Clinicians are fitting hearing aids, they are sitting in front of a computer and the client is wearing the hearing aids and the hearing aids are communicating with the computer and the clinician is literally programming the sound of the hearing aids, either with by hard wire or wireless Bluetooth. So hearing aids being digital like many computers are programmed with the software provided by the hearing aid manufacturers. It's quite a world out there. But let's take this story to where we've got to go in this vignette here. This is a picture of two particular stored programs on someone's hearing aid. We can see here once again frequency, lows on the left, mids here and highs on the right, the vertical once again showing the amount of amplification in decibels, and this is just a fictitious drawing, but it illustrates something here. Look at the solid line. Remember the previous slide we showed how less amplification would be given for the bass to that audiogram and more amplification for the treble? Well, that's illustrated by this yellow line here. That would be called the listener's main program, program one, the program for listening in quiet, the general needs. But when we're looking at the dotted line, you can see how it differs. It's giving less amplification in the low pitches and more amplification in the highs. And that would be a program apt or appropriate for listening to speech while in background noise. And let's face it, the main complaint of all hearing aid wearers is background noise. Well, this would be called program two. 
when in noise, the listener could choose to select this program or choose this program and therefore reduce the amount of low frequency background noise because most background noise is low frequency and at the same time boost the amount of amplification for the treble for the high frequency consonants. Sh, 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 F, S, T, H, K, 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 K. All of these sounds would be increased because we know that low frequencies mask high frequencies better than high frequencies mask low frequencies. That's something called the upward spread of masking. It's just there. But so, but listening in noise, you could choose uh, program two, reduce the hubbub of background noise, the low frequencies, again, because most of background noise is low frequency in nature, and increasing the audibility of the high frequency consonants of speech, and thus rendering speech to be more audible and understandable in quiet. The story doesn't even end here. The next vignette we will talk about how we separate speech from background noise. Hearing aids have a twofold task. First they've got to amplify like this, but that's just amplification. But secondly, we have now ways to separate speech from background noise, and it's called directional mics and digital noise reduction. We'll talk about that next. Cheers.